Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back on the Mike and Mike Premier Business Radio Program around. I'm your host, Mike King. Appreciate you being here with me. We're coming to you today from Midas Original. We are on the boulevard. This is part of the BBB. This is their segment. Shout out, <clears throat> shout out to my man Barry Moore. So on the Mike and Mike, on the Mike and Mike is the radio program. It is part of the Mike King Biz Radio Network, which is ESPN Version 106.1, the choice every day from um, 2 to 3 p.m., as well as International Business Group Radio. You can follow me on all social platforms. One of my good might be highlight partnership people. We also talk about social enterprise, how business helps society be better. Today, we're coming to you from Midas. So, if we're coming to you from Midas, we got the man in the building with us, Mark Smith. Welcome to the program, sir. Thanks, Mike. Happy to be here. Alrighty, so, um, Mike, you don't need any introduction, but it's a business show. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. I'm Mark Smith. I own and operate the five Midas stores here in Central Virginia. That's it? That's it. Man, you do a lot more than that. That's the foundation of it. Now, we're going to start off with me banging on your door years ago and from 2016 saying, hey, I'm Mike King. I got a great idea. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things I learned from you. One, no, it's not a four-letter word. No, it's not a four-letter word. <laughs> and it, maybe not now, but but later. People know you, and I always talk about changing the world isn't cheap, easy, or free. So money has to change hands sometimes. Effort has to change hands a lot of the times. Talk about that as a foundation for you and Midas and what that means. Because people see you as that person in the community. Well, I'm a big believer, Mike, as you know, in the idea that nothing changes until something changes, right? So we've got things out here we need to do. We've got kids we need to feed. We've got nonprofits we need to support we've got people out there working in our community that need our help and so when we find synergies and we find ways to engage that that's what we try and do with Midas of Richmond is take a car care experience and turn it into a community care experience as well so you're taking a car care experience something that people do every day have to get car work done but people trust in you to make that happen and be a part of the community doing it I hope to think so we've done this now 23 years I think we've set a track record with Feed more with Gooch and Cares, with Shalom Farms, with Ask, with all the nonprofits we support. We've done that now long enough that I think people, there's some credibility to it. My people believe in it, my people invest in it, and it works for everybody. There's a, there's a number of things. So we're here as part of the Better Business Bureau. Barry Morris, after the chief guy talking about trust in an organization, that's big for the Better Business Bureau being in an accredited business. But it's also for you that you come up with a program and idea plan and people believe in you, let's talk about the milk donation program. So and every Friday. to you mm -hmm. with the idea of here, I'm going to give you this and let's make magic happen because they know you will. Every Friday, we deliver 50 gallons of fresh milk. 25 of it goes to Gooch and Cares. 25 of it goes down to the Colonial Heights Food Pantry. That's about $190 worth of milk. And about once a month, somebody comes along and says, hey, I'd like to pay for the milk this week. And by the way, can I ride along? Those are fun mornings. It's every Friday morning. People are really getting behind it. We've collected tens of thousands of dollars to support it, and it seems to be working. When, when, what's it feel like when, when you have something like that? It's an idea, and then all of a sudden, the idea takes hold and it works. I think everybody's got ideas, Mike, and I think for whatever reason, you know, you come up with a good idea and then you start talking to yourself out of it. You know, this won't work because this won't work because what if, what if, what if? I go kind of the other direction. Um, we're going to try ideas out. Some are going to work better than others. Some aren't going to work at all. But if you work these things out and you build around them, sooner or later, you come up with things that work. And that's kind of how we've built community network that Midas Richmond's known for. When you look at that community now, has it changed any what you see and what people deal with now as opposed to, say, 20 years ago or 15 years ago? Oh, it's changed sooner than that. You know, COVID. I think COVID has rewritten so many rules, some of which we kind of have our heads around and some of which we probably still don't you know three years from now we're going to be talking about this big COVID impact how it changed how we do business how it changed how we market how it changed how we go about market share um change is kind of a constant it's a given so you've got to be willing to kind of look at what you do and adapt as you go along to accommodate whatever's coming your way when we talk about COVID we also talk about employees mm -hmm. one of the things I noticed and I looked at when people looked at me and said Wow, Midas is offering a crazy number as a signing bonus. Mm -hmm. Which, from a marketing standpoint, that, that's, a, that's a new phenomenon that we have right now. 
What have you learned coming out of COVID now on the other side of it that before you never did before and now also, I know you've always been people centric. Mm -hmm. A lot of businesses are just starting to get to that idea. But now they're looking at it saying, I have to even double down more. Mike, I don't care what business you're in. If you're a broadcaster, if you fix cars, if you're a restaurant, if you're a dentist's office, in my head, I've always thought everybody's in the people business. I'm only as good as my people. Unfortunately, I've got great people around me. The experiences they choose to create for our clients kind of define what Midas is. My job is to sit in the back, but I think we're all in the people business. And what COVID has taught me anyway is you can't communicate enough. You know, when COVID started and there was all the uncertainty and everything that went along with it, I was in the stores two and sometimes three times a day just being a cheerleader. You know, we don't know what we don't know. We're open. Let's be smart. Let's be cautious. But let's keep taking advantage of the fact we've got what jobs to do. And let's do it. You always think so. One of my good mic here, mine is with Mark Smith. We're, this is part of the Better Business Bureau. People trust you. And that's part of the, the Better Business Bureau mantra. How long have you been part of the Better Business Bureau? And what's the, what's the, what's the real draw to it from your standpoint? It's one of the more, if not the most, credible business organizations in Central Virginia. It's got a great brand recognition. Now with Barry at the helm, I'm completely reinvesting because I totally believe in Barry and the work he's done. I've known Barry a long time. Um, and when he came back around and took his new role, that just made me reinvest that much further. We've been a part of the BBB since I've been in business here in Richmond, Virginia in 98. I was on the board for a while. Uh, it's a good group of people making a big impact in Central Virginia, and it kind of gives any business a credible basis to align with. We don't know a lot of times what the Better Business Bureau is, but when you see the three letters, mm -hmm. it gives you a sense that they're out there doing something that's good. So Mike King, Mark Smith is here with us. Uh, you, you know, I've sat down with you a couple of times here, talked about business, and you always seem to be on the, the cutting edge, the front end of, of things. So we talked in the past about female and women in this industry. You ran a commercial, your wife was in it, and I remember things like that. Let's talk about how with the empowerment of females and women in the industry, opportunities, and the part that it plays for you guys. I mean, it's a great example, Mike Scott's edition. We've got two ladies that run Scott's edition. Brittany and Tanya are my store management team here in, in Scott's edition. Tanya's been with me for 15, 18 years. She's grown up from a general service technician. She now runs a seven-figure service center. Um, I love having women in our world because historically, the car care situation with women, they come in concerned. Like I get yes. taken advantage of, what if, what if, what if? And I've always thought having two or three or four women in each of our locations hopefully disarms that a little bit. The ladies you meet that wear the Muddest Richmond brand have been with me a long time. And they help kind of establish some basis of credibility, I feel, for our experiences. One of the things that on the program I always talk about is, is credibility and culture. How do you set that culture? And I remember before when you talked about benchmark or competition. See, I remember stuff that you tell me. It's the benchmark. You are not in the competition with other people who do what you do. You look at the best organization and say, what are they doing? Mm -hmm. How do you set the culture to be winning? Or, and does it always have to come from the top? Or can there be a groundswell of people saying, we want a better culture here? Or do those people just leave? I think it's a little bit of everything you just said. Um, I mean, my people know I've got a wide open door if they want to come in with ideas to share and things to share. I think it's important that I lead by example. Um, I kind of get out, set the example, show what I'm talking about. When we come up with people, we compare ourselves to the Union Square Hospitality Group, the Cleveland Clinic, things like that. Um, you know, here in town, you've got some great experiences with uh, Gary and Puritan Cleaners, Saxon Shoes, some others. You've got great people doing business here. And if you look around, you can always glean something from somebody. Where do you get that next generation of you guys from? You know, of the people who want to be corporate citizens, people who understand what I always say, business can help society be better. Where do you get that from in the next generation of entrepreneurs who are out there? You're constantly talking about it. I've got the good fortune to talk, speak at area schools, and I talk to the students. You know, you are the next generation. Uh, I've, I'm not kidding anybody. I've got more days of stern than I do ahead of me. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so you talk to young people, you set the example, you show them the power of the possible. Think about the cultures, Mike, that when you and I were kids versus now, 
you know, it was a lifetime employment. It was this, it was that. That's all out the door. Yeah, it is. You've got to go out, find opportunities, create opportunities. And when you become a part of it, genuinely invest in it to make the most in it for everybody. And inside the organization, how do you groom leadership? How do you groom like the next generation? How do you go from being a general service technician to running a place? Uh, Tanya is a uh, study in perseverance. She's, she's gone up levels, she's gone up skill sets, and she's done that all of her own volition. We create the opportunity, but I can't make people walk through doors. You know, if you, if you want to come in and grow, we will create the avenue that allows you to grow. But growth is a choice. I can't force you to grow. I can create situations and opportunities within the stores that you can explore. And if you like them, you pursue them. When, as I said, I have banged them on your door ever since I got here in 2016. Mark, I got a great idea. I'm sure you did it. Everybody, somebody comes to you and say, hey, Mark, you know what, man? I got this mediocre idea. Why don't you take a listen? I mean, no, everybody has a great idea. Yeah, everybody's got a better master. Everybody, everybody does. But sometimes it's tied to nonprofit. Sometimes it is tied to business opportunity, whether advertising, I was me, pound on my door. Hey, I got a great program here. How do you determine and pick which nonprofits to? I, I, we can see the ones that, you know, that we think that you always supporting. Feed more is once alone, farm schools and cares. How do you pick those for the next one that, that say, hey, you've touched my heart. I got to do something for them. The same way I pick my people, conversations. You talk to people, you feel them out, you vet them a little bit. You see how credible they run their organizations. You see how credible their mission is. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take many questions to kind of see through what's there. There are some incredible organizations operating here in Central Virginia to make impact on our community every day. This is one of those cases, Mike, and you and I have talked about this before. Unfortunately, there's some finites here. You know, there's a finite amount of time and a finite amount of funding. And while it would be great to add this one and this one and this one, I can either make a big impact with the ones we choose to support, or I can kind of dilute that all. I choose to keep the list a little shorter, but to make a bigger impact. You know, this summer, for instance, we're sending 80 kids with cancer to summer camp through Ask, Amy and her group. It's a great group. This is the first time they've had an in-person summer camp in three years. These kids are fighting cancer, so they're kind of isolated in any way. But the idea now that we can underwrite them getting back into it this year, I'm going to get behind that every day. Every day. That, you know, it's something. So did you always look at that amount? So my father was in the drum business, so, and I grew up with that. And you know the routine on Monday, the Girl Scout team comes mm -hmm. by. I tell people, if you're not looking for that business owner who you make that direct connection with, because there's a finite amount of dollars, the dollars are going to go by Wednesday, you know, we've given that off. You need the business owner who goes under the mattress to get that money, because that's the one who you know, who it's, it's a special relationship. When you look at the nonprofits who are out there, you can see the ones that really, really, really run smoothly, and those are the ones. So size doesn't matter. Do you always have a finite number, or did you, before, did, were you ever into a little here, a little there, a little there, a little there? Were you ever into that model? Well, not always, really. You always wanted to have the big impact. Though. You know, we started with Virginia Blood Service in 2001. Um, now it's the Red Cross. And then out of that, we morphed into our relationship with the Central Virginia Food Bank, which is now Feedmore. And it's always just kind of grown organically. You know, Shalom Farms, we got turned on to by Feedmore. Goochland Cares, we got turned on to because we live in Goochland. So it's all just kind of been a fit and play. And then you get to know who you're dealing with. You work with them. You find out how you can help them make as big an impact as they can make in their mission. And you get behind it. What's it feel like when you're out and somebody says, hey, Mark, you take this money. I know that you're going to do the right thing and help the person with it. Is there people who are trying to with this radio program and this platform, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I tell people, if you're not looking for your marksman who loves your organization, you're always going to be out with a, a cup saying, how do we make this happen the next time? How do we make, because it's always going to be transactional. I warn people, and when I speak I said, at schools, when I speak, I talk about BSOs, bright, shiny objects. The nonprofit yeah. world is filled with them. You know, unfortunately, somewhere tomorrow, there's going to be an earthquake or there's going to be a tsunami or there's going to be this, or there's going to be that. And then poof, Bill Clinton and George Bush are going to show up on TV and say, please send money here. I want Central Virginia taken care of. That's my mission. My mission is to keep our nonprofit dollars and support local. 
It's terrible what happens in other parts of the world, but I don't live in other parts of the world. I live in Richmond. I want to make an impact here, and I want to help people make an impact here and show them that if they want to, they can. All right, you listen to Mark Smith. It's Mike and Mike, Mike RV's best business. Well, the only daily business radio program around. So I always say change in the world ain't cheap, easy, or free. Sir, this is the uh, sales pitch time for Minus and Richmond. What do you guys have going on now? Uh, you see the loaner cars out all over the place. You see all the things that you guys have done during the pandemic. What do you guys have going on now? We're up to 55 loaner cars, Mike, and I'm buying more. Yeah, I laughed too. I never thought, I remember when I had 10, and I thought, how could I ever need more than 10? Now I've got 55, and I'm buying more. Um, we're full car care. You know, oil changes to engines. We do it all. We hope to be people's car care provider of choice. We've got our five locations. It's the same faces you've always seen at them. Our people don't turn over. And it's it's just a fun to, part to be a group of, a group to be a part of. And uh, how can people find Midas or Richmond out there? Give us a call, 804-360-2211. That's our pump store. They'll direct you where you want to go. If you want to talk to me directly, 804-240-1066. It's always on. Um, give us a buzz. A while back, I talked to the CEO of Elephant Insurance, and I asked him, what was the one big thing that you guys learned from the pandemic? He said he was sure remote working wouldn't work. He said 100% he knew it wouldn't work. Two, three weeks into it, okay, I understand, it's working. What did you learn coming through the pandemic that right now you guys are saying, boy, that really helped, even though it was hard before? to zig when everybody else was zagging so early on you know february march of 2020 everybody was scared we didn't know what we were facing there was news about fatalities and this and that and the other by april may of 2020 i kind of started seeing everybody running scared duck and cover i called our marketing guy and said we're going the opposite direction we're going back in let's double our radio flighting and let's add a four tv station which we did and we've stuck with that course, we've stuck that path, and business is booming. I'm happy to say we've got more than we can deal with. Is that when you went to the marketing campaign and we'll bring the cars to you and mm -hmm. leave the... More to your door. Yep. We went right after it, and we've reaped the benefits of it. We have more business than we can handle, which is a, either a good, bad problem or a bad, good problem. I don't know. But we're, yeah, we're, as you can see, the bays are full, and we're rocking on the mic, Mike Marcus here. So we'd like to thank you. Anything uh, words of wisdom for nonprofits or business owners out there? Oh, really quickly before we go, you know, let's talk about you know making magic happen, making dreams happen. Entrepreneurs are out there. You're going. They're going through a period. They wanted to jump into this new world. Like me, I, even though I grew up with the family always owned our business. I had no burning desire. I was good as a salesperson. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff out here. You know, when when you're the guy, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's a lot a lot different. So what it, which words of wisdom or something can you give to entrepreneurs who are out there? Maybe they're going through a tough time, or maybe they're just thinking about pulling the trigger. You know, get a network. The best thing I've got going for me, Mike, is a network of people I talk to. You certainly among them. Barry and his team at Feedmore at uh, BBB, the Virginia Council of CEOs I'm a big part of, my own network inside the stores. If you've got an idea, run with it. Get people out there to listen to you. Get people out there to build a relationship and a network with. Mentor when you can. I'm happy to say I mentor several kids and I get really enjoy it. Um, but kind of be the change you seek. And I think you'll pleasantly surprise yourself with what you can create. There you go. Word to Mark Smith. Mike King here. This is part of the Barry Moore. This is Barry Moore's time. The man Barry Moore. This is 5 a.m. on Monday. We kick the week off right with Barry Moore here. Uh, he also has an outstanding facility. When Barry Moore came back to uh, Richmond, I'm like, okay, I'm on board. He's the man. He was giving me tips when I was over at the TV station that I always remember. And look at me now. Here I am. There you go. Sue Mark Smith. One of my, my, my king here, part of the Mike King Big Radio Network. Make sure you go check out my man, uh, Barry Moore. They have facilities up there. Uh, trust in the organization, trust in business at the foundation. We'll talk to you soon. As I always say, uh, the microphone ain't free. Plus, my grandkids need stuff. So make sure you take a listen to our sponsors and advertisers. You got to show some love to the folks out there. Absolutely. That's how we do it here. Well, Mike, Mike, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. Take care. Take care, folks.